Okay, hello everyone and welcome. Um, my name is Brad Johnson and tonight we are going to be taking a little bit deeper dive into what I'm classifying our breakdown between our two generators, both the Generator X and the XM generator. A little bit of the showdown. This, is, this presentation is going to help you kind of get familiar with the both the products themselves, what they actually have capabilities of doing, um, function-wise features. But we're also going to take a look at the specific biofeedback systems um, for both, not uh, just the Generator X, but we're going to take a uh, talk about the biofeedback for the generator XM, as well as the pulse system. Um, obviously, I mean, we'll talk a little bit about that, as well as we're going to be doing a live presentation of the sample digitizer, as well as the contact method on the Gen X. So as we jump in, um, if you guys were around last week, we broke off this presentation with introducing a five-step overview. And this five-step overview is designed to kind of help lighten the questions with regards to how and what do I do, or where do I navigate, and how do I choose programs to get going with the Spooky Tube products. And what this portion of this uh, presentation is, is basically the first decision in that decision-making tree of um, what really do I get when I'm comparing the two generators? What are the features and everything of both? So without further ado, we're gonna jump on in here. So again, this is that overview that we kind of briefly touched base on um, when I did my last webinar. However, this particular presentation is just going to focus on this first decision-making trade. The, the primary differences between the XM generator and the generator X, as well as the biofeedback systems for both of these units. Let's jump in and first start talking about the XM generator. The XM generator right now has a U.S. cost of roughly about $100. Um, it is, in my opinion, one of the most cost-effective units um, out there on the market with regards to getting started or getting going and jumping into not only Rife capabilities, but um, the Spooky 2 system and um, really, like I said, just an amazing jump off point for a what this particular product has to offer. Um, this is a field programmable uh, function generator. It is primarily, you know, like I said, it is one generator with two outputs on it, as you see here in, uh, on the actual display of the two outputs. And on the two outputs themselves, you can then attach your accessories with it, whether that be your boost. Um, and then from the boost, you'll have options like the cold laser or the PEMF, the contact options, anything like that. What makes this device so specifically unique is, again, it's catered for um, basically an introduction into, like I said, the Spooky 2 universe, if you will. Now, for $100, what really truly unlocks this device is the potential of what happens when you combo this with the Spooky 2 software. So right out of the box, this, this generator does you know, hook up and you can actually use the navigations on the unit for navigating the uh, actual interface on here. If you understand how to control and operate the waveforms and the specific functions and voltages that you want, you can use that just in itself. But when you do that, you limit the capability of it because it will only have a range of frequency between zero and five megahertz. Whereas the moment that you connect this to the software, now all of a sudden you have the ability of using the Spooky2 software to use different waveform modulations, uh, harmonic multipliers, and basically really just expand on what you can potentially do with this. Now all of a sudden, instead of having a zero to five megahertz range, you're looking at specific ranges between zero and 25 megahertz with this particular generator. So um, again, that is um, specific, you know, that you want to take note of that because in comparison to some of the, you know, frequency ranges of what we'll talk about with the uh, generator X, um, you know, they're drastically different. In fact, they're almost just under half as different, you know, from 0 to 25 versus a 0 to 40 megahertz range on the XM uh, versus generator X. But with this guy, once you pair him with the software itself, that is where you unlock the true potential of being able to go in and, like I said, use the software to truly be able to get not only more power, or better waveforms and different um, you know, multiplier and harmonics involved with those software, but truly, you know, get able, you know, able to take advantage of both outputs on this generator. So, um when you start taking a look at some of the accessory options for what the XM can bring to the table, you can do no, everything that you see here on the screen. The, the contact sessions, um, whether you're hooking up the remote and doing remote sessions where you don't actually have to physically be connected to the generator itself, you simply have to put your DNA into the remote and let the software and the generator do the work while you're up and about or doing your day. 
Um, one of the other main features that I really enjoy with the XM generator is using the cold, uh, cold laser features. Both the twin um, and the wrist laser are great options. Um, I do personally a lot of frequency imprinting um, with similar like what you see on the screen there where um, you know you can simply take high quality distilled water and use the, either the twin and or the wrist for means of applying the frequencies out of the spooky database and into these distilled solutions. Um, as you can see on here, you can also use the XM generator for making colloidal silver if you have the colloidal silver kit. Um, but additionally, one of my other favorite things in addition to imprinting with the cold laser is the ability of doing of using the PEMF coil. The PEMF coil, um, obviously when you're using the booster with this guy, you can do pretty much unlock, like I said, the whole potential of the frequency databases because now you can imprint your own frequencies directly from this using the PEMF coil into um, things like distilled water solutions or um, essential oils or carriers for anything that you're looking for and then apply them on a topical basis and then because they absorb so quickly, those frequencies absorb into the skin and work very, very, very effectively, just like you were uh, no different for how the means for how you're applying them to your body. So like I said, the XM generator is a tremendous feature generator for being as stable as it is and what it ultimately brings to the table for a $100 generator. Um, like I said, it, it does have slightly limited in range in comparison. You know, when you're looking at its older brother, the Gen X, um, simply because of the fact that once you start looking at the Gen X, the Generator X is an entirely different beast altogether. So the Gen X basically has the comparison of having two XM generators in it. It has two generators built into one. So in addition to the two for one option, what you get with this particular unit is a much more drastically improved biofeedback capability you know, for how the biofeedback systems are run. And we'll get into that a little bit later with regards to the comparison of the two systems and using the pulse versus using contact or using sample digitizer a means for doing biofeedback. But um, additionally, one of the things, like I said, in comparison to looking at the frequency ranges, this guy right out of the bat has a frequency range between zero and 40 megahertz. Um, and as you see, with regards to some of the more rates, um, particularly some of the more rates for cancers can actually span as high as 17 megahertz. So you know, in comparison to, let's say, something where you're not using a boost, you'll want to keep that in mind because particularly if you're trying to hit certain types of ranges for, for you know, specific frequencies, this particular frequency without the use of any of the multipliers or the software specifically will allow you to have that coverage range between zero and 40 megahertz right out of the go. Um, additionally, you know, like I said, the fact that you have two generators built in you know, gives you the basic two for one. And that's remarkably easy with regards to being able to, um, so additionally, the, one of the bigger you know, features about this is it has its own solid state memory inside of it. So you can add up to 30 frequency programs out of the Spooky2 database, put them directly into the memory of the Generator X, disconnect that from the software, and then actually run these without the necessarily having them connected to the, the software itself. Now, however, that, that's not necessarily the case when you're talking about biofeedback scans, because regardless of which system you're using, when you're conducting biofeedback scans, you have to have the Spooky2 software up and running because it does all the calculations in the background as these um, two generators are actually running different frequency pings through your body. So ultimately, what you're looking at here is a, a two-for-one option with regards to generators. Um, this one has a slightly higher frequency range. It has way more functionality, but really, as we kind of get into this presentation, what you're going to learn is, is the, the primary benefit of what this generator brings in comparison to the simple XM generator is the difference in the biofeedback systems. Um, so as we kind of take a look at what the, the accessory options are for the XM. They are no different than what the accessory options are you know, from the XM to the Gen X. Um, just like what you see on the screen, the only primary difference is the fact that you have two built-in generators. So whereas you could only hook up one, op um, one option 
or accessory before, whether that be cold lasers or whether that be PEMF coil or contact sessions. With this, you can have so many more options because you can hook up two accessories at the same time because they can run their own programming out of generator one and generator two using the Spooky2 software. Um, so again, whether you're doing the accessories for cold laser or for the PEMF or um, again, as we start doing the comparisons for the biofeedback scanning here shortly, and we're going to do some actual live biofeedback scans tonight during this presentation so that you can kind of see not only how the scans are conducted, but um, how and where to find those scans once you've completed those scans and where to locate them in the database, how, how you would run a program once you completed those particular scans. So let's go ahead and jump on in and take a look at that. So when you're comparing the two systems with regards to the XM generator and the Gen X side by side on a biofeedback basis, both, are, both of them are effective and both of them have means for doing biofeedback scans. Here are your primary differences. With the Gen X exclusively, normally your scans are going to take on average about an hour in time. Um, they are going to require you to lay down and in most instances you will need the assistance of someone else to help start and stop the programming for starting the actual biofeedback scan. Um, the XM generator will require the use of the spooky pulse um, because the, the pulse is used for monitoring your heart rate as these pings are being uh, different fre frequencies are being pinged through your body. So the no different than how the generators operate, before you actually power up the software for the XM generator, you have to make sure that you have the pulse up and connected and that you're actually showing that working prior to getting the pulse progress up and going. Additionally, with the XM and the pulse scans, um, in addition to taking about an hour to complete the scan, it will... Um, the method for how you're doing that scan is going to be um, slightly different with regards to the processes of what you see in comparison to the Generator X, whereas the Generator X can now utilize, because of the fact that it has two outputs in one, a, a particular preset out of the Spooky2 database known as a hunt and kill protocol. And what that hunt and kill protocol basically allows you to do is hook up a sample digitizer to one generator and a remote to the other generator and using the software you can program this to run a biofeedback scan and then tell it to run the results of that biofeedback scan in a basically looped mechanism so that as those hits are found on your BFB scan then they are sent to that generator the second generator here for a killing program for 30 minutes and then run back and scan again and then that process will continue until either you have no more pathogens found or you stop the program itself so like i said the capabilities of doing that type of setup you have to have the gen x for because you you can't use the sample digitizer without the gen x um, and you would need two generators uh, in order to do that type of hunt and kill protocol whereas the XM generator itself is going to require the use of the spooky pulse and the pulse, the pulse will need to be up and connected, um, obviously, before you start loading up the software to make sure that it's you've got green lights on that and a pulse for the red flashing light for you. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the biggest difference is the time of the two scans. Um, with the XM scan, you know, we do have to lay down, you'll have to remove your outside RF interference sources and that scan can take about an hour. And in comparison to the Gen X, the Gen X scans, biofeedback scanning now can be done in about six minutes. Um, you no longer have to lay down, no more waiting and wondering how much longer is this thing going to take to scan to give me my biofeedback results. Much, much, much faster results. And, uh, and again, they're so quick that we're actually going to cover how those scans work this evening. Um, obviously, from an overview perspective, I can't... Um, I can't, I don't have the capabilities of actually hooking myself up to an XM generator and laying down still and, and talking you guys through that. So for, for the most part, I'm simply going to be explaining the process with regards to how the um, pulse, which is, as you see on the screen down here, connected. And then from there, you'll hook up your TENS pads and make sure everything is up and running when you're doing the biofeedback scan for the XM generator. Um, we'll also talk about the contact methods for the Gen X how you and where you apply the pads for both of these types of scans, um, as well as doing an actual biofeedback scan using a sample digitizer. Um, as you see on there, the, the plates that, there that have the E on that is where we'll be placing the sample. And uh, tonight we're actually going to be conducting a sample digitizer scan as well. So 
As we jump off here to take a look first at the biofeedback scans for the Gen X, um, or excuse me, for the XM. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, normally you will probably need the help of an assistant to help get this particular scan done. Um, it is um, a little time consuming because again, it does require you to lay flat, remain perfectly still and relax. Um, when you start this particular type of scan, as I mentioned before, before you go to open the Spooky software, you want to make sure that the pulse is actually connected to your laptop and that it has a green light on the pulse. Um, once you actually put the pulse, which you see here on the screen, you can either use the earpiece or the, the finger piece. But once you put your finger into it, the red light should start flashing to indicate that you actually have a heartbeat running and you're monitoring that heart rate. And so once you have that, then, and again, obviously your software uh, your uh, generators are powered up, then you'll open up the Spooky2 software and then we'll go into the actual biofeedback processes um, for conducting a pulse scan. And that's where the use of an assistant comes in because even though you're um, going to be conducting the scan, you, you truly do need to be lying flat and relaxing for the scan to, to work. Um, with regards to where you'll place the TENS pads for this particular type of scan, the optimal placement is going to be on the right wrist and on the lower ankle, left ankle. So almost diagonal. Um, this is designed to be a full body scan. You know, because of the fact that this scan takes some time to run these different frequencies through your body, um, I've, I've heard of people saying that sometimes even doing the biofeedback scans, you can, you can feel like uh, that you're almost like a, you're developing a, a Herxheimer's reaction. But truly what that is, is you're just sending frequency resonance through your body as those different frequencies are pinging through doing that scan. You know, as those are resonance, that resonance is happening, those hits, if you will, are being dictated. And then that report is generated basically based off of which frequencies had the most response to the frequency of the sweep itself as that BFB scan was being done, then it will re generate a report for you. And that report you can save. And uh, after that report is saved, you know, uh, obviously the naming structure that you give it is how you will locate that in the programs once you've saved the file. So we'll show you again how that process happens tonight when we get into the XM scans and actually conducting the, the biofeedback scan for the generator X and for the sample digitizer. But um, as mentioned before, normally the use of an assistant helps because um, you do need to lay completely flat. Um, you will also need to turn off your television and any outside RF interference sources. Um, the reason that you need to lie flat is because obviously we're monitoring your heart rate. So um, it's important that obviously once you're hooked up to that pulse and moving, that movement is going to impact your heart rate. So um, the goal of this particular scan is designed to be a thorough scan, um, but is, like I said, it, it is time consuming. It takes anywhere between 55 minutes to an hour. Sometimes you can do as short as 45, it really just kind of depends on the scan of the person, but primarily you're looking at right at an hour um, time frame wise. And that for the most part is the process for how the scan itself is done. And then once the save results are finished, just like what you'll see with the uh, Gen X and the sample digitizer scan slides that we're getting ready to run through, the save results will be displayed on the screen and you can simply give them a naming structure. And then once that has been done, you can find those programs in the Spooky2 database and then run and create your own programs with those results. Let's take a look real quick at the methods for the Gen X. So for the Gen X, again, as we talked about, that method is a lot, lot, lot faster now. So versus a one hour test, um, you'll basically take, we'll take these two uh, TENS pads tonight. We'll get them hooked up. Um, locations for these TENS pads are going to be your lower abdomen, lower and right side of the abdomen. And once you run that that scan, you know, like I said, unlike where you were having to lay down for your XM scan and have someone assist you, for the most part, you still want to sit back and relax. You know, you don't want to have too many outside distractions. Um, you don't want to be messing with too many things. You are trying to run a scan. So I will run through the specific settings on the Spooky2 database as to what I do when I'm creating my biofeedback scans, um, how I use angle plus current scanning. And again, we'll conduct these two scans here for you. But we're also going to do a sample digitizer scan. Now, the sample digitizer um, basically allows you to take a liquid sample and put them onto these two slides. So by simply separating the slides out, you'll notice that they create this E shape design. And with that E, once you put a liquid sample on this, and we'll talk about this a little bit later as we actually get into the process, 
Now you can run a biofeedback scan without having to be physically connected um, as you would have been with either the Spooky Pulse doing an XM scan or even with the contact method doing a Gen X scan. Um, now you can simply allow the scan to run uh, in the background without having to physically be connected to it anymore. So that is one of the, you know, the primary benefit of what the sample digitizer brings to the game when it comes to doing biofeedback scanning. But we'll conduct both of those types of scans here um, this evening. But as we're doing this, um, I'm actually going to physically be putting the pads on and kind of walking through this process. Um, as we get through the tutorial here, I will physically go through the database and physically start and run a biofeedback scan for you. So um, as we kind of talked about with this particular scan, the ideal tens placement, and it, you'll you'll notice it doesn't matter if you're using the red side or the black side with regards to the colors of the tens pads. You just want to primarily separate them out so that one of those tens pads is on the lower right hand side of your abdomen, and then the other tens pads is going to be on the the opposite side, lower abdomen. You'll keep the location of these little sticky pads for, so that after the scan completes, you can replace those on the back of the tens um, pads. But once you have the tens pads placed on either side of the abdomen then you will go into the database just like you see here and you're going to select biofeedback because um, this is the preset that is ultimately going to be running the biofeedback scan for us. Then after you've so, you know, selected the biofeedback scan and you already have the tense pads collect, uh, connected similarly to what you see here in the picture, the next step is going to be to select which mechanism are you using for conducting the biofeedback scan. Um, there are four options from the spooky system as of right now for how to do sample, uh, excuse me, how to do biofeedback scannings. In this instance here, we are going to be looking at the biofeedback for the generator X. So the <clears throat> option that you would then select is gonna be generator X. And then once you select generator X, it's gonna ask you, what type of scans are you going to be doing? Uh, so in this instance right here, we are going to be doing just a regular general biofeedback scan you can tell that if this is a C right here for contact, um, which is what the TENS pads means. Those TENS pads are physically connected to my body. That is the means for how we'll be running this biofeedback scan. And the visual confirmations that the software will give you when you select this, you'll notice that down here in the presets, the scan option is pulled up. It shows you that the general biofeedback scan option has been selected or added to the pre-chain. The notes will also populate here, which will give you the full kind of breakdown of, of exactly what this type of scan is, the placement of the TENS pads and everything for what this general biofeedback scan is. And then after you see these two pull up, then you simply need to go to the control tab, overwrite the generator that you're going to be running the biofeedback scan on and select the generator. So in this instance, you're seeing, this is a two generator setup. The biofeedback scan was selected and overwritten onto generator four. And when that process happens, you'll notice it pulls up generator four. It just pulls up the scan that we just selected. It'll show you biofeedback scan, C for contact, JW for John White program. And then once that process happens, notice how it doesn't give you a start option. This isn't like a program that you're just going to start, but you are gonna come down to this section. And in this section where it says biofeedback scan, this section down here will help you to, you know, create the settings that you want to do for the custom scanning that you're going to do on your own biofeedback scan. So a couple of things that I personally modify when I do my scans is unlike where the system will just run a normal six minute scan, um, I prefer to loop that system twice. Um, again, even in comparison to what type of re scan results you were talking about with a, an, an XM generator, you're nowhere near in comparison, you know, an hour versus 12 minutes. Um, and honestly, most of the time it'll finish in about 11 minutes or so. Like, so we're gonna run one tonight so that you can see the exact timing of how long the process takes. But I had that loop twice. Um, and I do that just from a, a personal sake that I like knowing that if a scan result runs one time through the system and it generates hits one through 10, on the same scan or looped twice, it should find the same results. And if not, it's going to filter those out and tell me which were my, you know, considered loudest screamers regarding the frequency hits. Additionally, with the original biofeedback scanning, you know, initially when you're talking about the XM scans where you're doing pulse, pulse is only really interested in monitoring the, 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 the heart rate or the beats per minute from the pulse perspective itself. But when you're getting into the contact method for the Gen X, 
Um, one, because it's a slightly faster scan, most people can start with doing the current scan. However, I prefer to do the current plus angle scan. Um, it is a slightly more detailed scan and it does take an additional minute or so for the scan to run. Um, it is also possible to run the current scan and then come back and analyze with the angle, you know, to have a little bit more detailed scan results as well. Um, but again, from my personal experience, once I have those tense pads connected, the only modification I make once I've overwritten the generator here for generator four is to physically come down here, modify this to two and select current and angle. And then by hitting scan, you'll notice that within a couple of seconds, as this thing starts kicking off and the duration time starts counting up, the lights on this will start changing from red to green. You'll start noticing the frequency ranges will start sweeping as these pings are going through your body. And then, like I said, from that point, it's really just a matter of sitting back and letting the, the system uh, run, its, run its case with regards to how the biofeedback system is going to work. So as I've shown you guys before, I've got the biofeedback tens pad set up. So just like we saw in the presentation, we are going to be doing a generator X. We are going to be conducting a general biofeedback scan, JW scan. You see that the confirmation that I've selected the program is pulled up here. It pulls up the notes, just like we showed. Now we're gonna go here and we are going to actually overwrite generator one. Overwrite generator one. And when I do that, the visual confirmation that you can confirm that that program, that biofeedback scan from the initial presets menu did load up, it shows you right here, generator one. XM generator or Gen X biofeedback scan contact method. So that is where those 10 pads are going to come into play because this is a contact scan. And again, notice no option here to hit start. So that basically leads you to come down here to your biofeedback options for what do you want to do specifically in the biofeedback? Um, as I mentioned before, default loop is by one. I changed this to two. Um, I also specifically changed from current to angle plus current. And then from there, I simply hit scan. And when I click the scan button, it's going to start the biofeedback system. Uh, scan, there we go. And it's generating the waveforms right now. And as it's generating the waveforms, then in a couple of seconds here, you'll start noticing that the um, frequencies start picking up. And then as this process happens, the secondary generator here, if this were generator were running, this would be paused because for the most part, when you have the biofeedback scan running, it is only going to be monitoring the biofeedback scan. It will not allow you to actually be running something else on the second generator. It wants you to primarily focus on just the results of this biofeedback scan and the results of what's happening. So this is going to run in the background and uh, we'll just kind of let this thing run. But as you can see, the visual indications that the system will give you that this is actually working is the scan is taking place, the frequencies are going up, the runtime has started, so you're off and running. You have a purple indicator here for the generator that you selected to run the biofeedback scan. So we know that that's up and running and we're good to go. So let's go back and take a look at our presentation. And I said, for the most part, once you have all these visualizations of what we just kind of walked through for that, that biofeedback scan, you're off and running. Then the very next thing that you're going to see pop up is going to be um, the actual results of that scan. And they're gonna pop up and look just like this, or what you're seeing on the screen here. Um, they will show and yield the, you know, the top hits from the frequency scan that it just ran through your body. And it's going to tell you that according to our scan, these are the most, you know, these are the loudest screamers that we found frequency wise. So immediately when this option pops up, it will give you two options. One, right here, you can run the reverse lookup. No different than you can when the program is pulled up here in the database for reverse lookup. It gives you an option to run one right now. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, adjust the tolerance to the correct tolerance that you're looking for for the best results suitable for what you are running the scans for and hit go and it will run a reverse lookup. The other option is to simply create the save option. Now, when you hit the save button after the BFB scan has been completed for a contacts method, and I will show you this personally once my scan results finish here in just a couple moments, but 
it's impor important that you remember the naming structure for how you save this file, because that's going to be how you find it once it's in the Spooky2 database. Once you actually save it and it adds to the, the local directory for the, you know, the Spooky2 um, file that you just saved for that BFB, I'm then going to show you where to go into the actual software and find that file and be able to then run programs or create um, specific, you know, healer, kill shell programs, anything that you primarily want to do with the software. That's the beautiful thing is it allows you the capability of doing whatever you want to with the results. So we'll take a look at how that process does uh, happens. But once you get to this last section, you know, it, again, it is very, very important that you remember exactly how you save that BFB result. Um, I suggest that you start by using the BFB call out because it is a biofeedback scan. Um, I also highly advise you to save the name of the person that the scan was conducted with. Um, also, I also in encourage you to save it uh, with a date because um, particularly as you start going in and doing more and more and more of these scans over time, because um, that's how you're going to be tracking different things, you want to know when those scans were. Um, and it's only <laughs> relevant if you write, remember the date as the format for how you save the files. So like I said, when you when this option pops up and you save this, this is how you will ultimately find that in the database. So like I said, we'll go back here and we're gonna check on our uh, feedback scan. And as you can tell, still running. We're about four minutes in, so no big deal. Like I said, on average, um, because I run this program twice, uh, it generally takes about 11, 12 minutes or so for me and that's fine because like i said uh, in comparison to a 45 minute scan or an hour long scan where i would have to be laid completely flat couldn't be talking to anybody i um, couldn't be um sitting up or moving um that's quite the drastic difference um but again th they do both yield biofeedback results so don't be discouraged if the gen x or the xm is all you have because the capabilities of of how it can run a biofeedback system when you're using it with a pulse is still very, very, very effective and still can be a great means for doing a full body scan, no different than what you're seeing with the uh, XM or even with the sample digitizer and the Gen X. But the timing is really the big difference. Um, again, you know, some people will think that one scan is more beneficial to the other. Um, I personally, like I said, I'm I like to be efficient, and if I don't physically have to be connected to something, my uh, preferred method of choice is obviously going to be every Friday night, I run a sample digitizer and a hunt and kill protocol. Um, it's a very simple and easy process, just like what I'm going to be doing today for actually running the sample digitizer scan after the contact scan finishes. Um, I'll actually be taking a drop of blood and applying it to those two slides and then letting that sample digitizer scan run. Now, the beautiful thing about the sample digitizer scan is because you're not necessarily hooked up to it, um, I can let that thing run overnight. So if I set that up as a hunt and kill protocol, like I mentioned before, where one generator port has the um, sample digitizer and the other one will have a remote and have my DNA sample in it, as the pathogenic threats are found from that sample digitizer scan where I put my blood sample on, whatever program it loads, unlike what you're seeing here where it simply creates and gives you the option to save whatever the scan results are for that, it sends them directly to the second output and then a kill program is run for 30 minutes with those results. And then once that's done, it sends it back to the sample digitizer to scan again. And that process continues on loop until you either don't have any more pathogenic hits or you stop the program itself. So like I said, if I start this program on a Friday night and I put a, put a drop of blood on there and I walk away, by the time I come back Saturday morning, if, it, if the program has stopped, then I know that I've just swept out most of the pathogenic threats from that blood sample that I applied the night before. Um, however, if I wake up and it's still running, it's still finding and still working its way through that hunt and kill protocol of finding and scanning specific, you know, uh, threats and then trying to eliminate them using more rates as it goes through on a killing pathogen or a killing perspective for targeting those hits of that specific BFB scan. So like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about the specifics of the sample digitizer once we actually do the scan. But right now, it looks like we're doing okay. We've got about seven minutes in. So what we're going to do right now is take a look at the overview for what the BFB or how you save the BFB results. So 
Normally, when that file pops up like this, and I talked about how you save that naming structure will be how you can actually find that in the Spooky2 database. So in this instance, in the presentation that you're seeing here, I saved this as BFB-Brad. Now I didn't put in a date on it specifically because of the presentation. Um, I just didn't wanna have a specific date on it, but most of the time you'll put a date on it so that you know exactly what date you completed that scan. And th those are those specific biofeedback results that you're seeing in these frequencies listed down here. Now. So after that save has been completed, when you're going into the database, simply by going into programs and you know, with all the programs enabled, if you search BFB, how you, the format for how you save that, that file, it will pull up right there. So like I said, if for any reason you are not able to see the BFB results pop up, simply come up to the top here where it has utils and, uh, and databases and then go into databases and refresh database. And within a couple of seconds, the database will refresh and that BFB result should populate. Most of the time it'll auto populate, but if for any reason you don't see it there first, simply refresh that so that make sure it pulls in that, that scan that you just saved. And then once that process is completed, then like I said, in the programs tab um, is where you'll primarily be able to find that. And then, the different presets that you design, whether you're going in and creating a kill program for those pathogens or for the results of those BFB results um, can all be done by simply going through the presets and selecting a shell preset. And then obviously when you go in with a shell preset, it's gonna force you to select a program. So in this instance, you would just search BFB and then when those options pull up, load the program down. And we'll go through this once once my BFB results actually finish so that you guys can kind of see how to navigate or where to go into the software. Once the scan actually res you know, results actually finish and you physically save them, where can you go and find them? So like right now, let's see, we'll take a look and see how the scan is coming along. Okay, so about nine and a half minutes and you can tell that the frequency ranges uh, based off of kind of where the ranges are, where you're going through that scan. So like I said, I, I wouldn't uh, suspect this thing to take more than a couple of minutes. And then once it finishes, then it's going to pop up with the name for how I want to save these biofeedback um, results. And again, no different than, you know, when you're going into the programs and you're pulling up those BFB results after the scans have been completed. Um, when you come into control and override a generator, just like what you're seeing here on my screen, after those scans have been complete, it will display those BFB results and give you a, the option for running the biofeedback uh, reverse lookup here. So again, when you when that file format pops up, it'll give you that right to run the reverse lookup. But if you don't have time or if you don't want to do that right then, or if you want to come back and look at the reverse lookup options for the, what your BFB results were later, then you can do that by simply going into the database, selecting the BFB program. And then once you overwrite the generator, then simply run your reverse lookup. So like I said, a minute or so more here. And then once this guy finishes up, um, I will get this one saved and then we'll add that to our database. And when we go in, I will actually show you, I've actually cleared out all of my BFB um, files. So there are no files that will be saved in here. This will be the first actual scan that we're gonna save to this database. So it should be very clear and easy to see that once the save finishes, where you can go or how you can do uh, maneuver with regards to, you know, how do I go in and then reapply a, a frequency program, even with those TENS pads still connected to you, because you use the TENS pads for your contact session for the means for doing the scan. So you might as well run the results of those scans on your body, you know, using the same contact method. So like I said, um, this guy is almost finished up here. And then once it finishes up, then we will save it. And then we're going to head over back down into programs and look to see the make sure that we can see the same file format for how the file saved. And then once you find it, then like I said, it's just a matter of pulling the, the options up. And once you're navigating through the, the software, that is the beautiful thing of the Spooky2 software is it gives you um, the options for whether you wanna create healing modalities or killing modalities. You know, most of the time, particularly when you're doing biofeedback scans, you want to target those in some type of killing modality program um, because the BFB scan is actually telling you that these are the, the things that resonated the loudest as we did this frequency scan on your body and that you should prioritize them as, you know, as, as something to, to focus on first. So that, like I said, the, the biggest misinterpretation with the biofeedback systems is that um, they are not diagnostic tools. You know, these are not 
intended to be medical diagnostic tools. Um, what this process is, is it, it monitors you know, a range of frequencies that as they ping through your body, uh, any type of more rates that are hit or resonance that happens, it records those hits. And the more intense that, that process is, the more drastic the hit is recorded. And again, it will prioritize those hits for you on a scale of one to 10 at the, as the save results finish. And then from there, it's truly up to you what you do with them. But again, with the contact pad still attached to me, that's no different than going in and then, okay, so here, the scan results just finished. So I'll pull this up here so that you see. So the scan results finished. And again, in this instance, look, we were at 12 minutes and 59, 58 seconds. So not too, too bad. Even in comparison to the you know one hour scan that you would be doing, I'd still be lying down flat wondering where we were if we were doing an XM scan with a pulse. Um, you can see that these are the specific results that it's found in this contact scan. Um, and as I mentioned, when this option pops up, it will allow you the option to run a reverse lookup. Or if you're not interested in running a reverse lookup right now, simply save it. And when this option pops up to save the program, then you'll simply come in here. And um, unlike the normal naming structure for the BFB and the date and everything that populates in this form, like I said, I move this out. I'll save this as the name for who conducted the scan and the date. So since today, 03-29-2022. And I'll also put C for contact because I know this was a contact scan. This wasn't a sample digitizer scan. Um, this was, I know it was done with my Gen X. So then I will hit save. It's gonna pop up and ask you, are you sure that you wanna save? So I would definitely wanna select yes. And then again, once that scan is completed and you'll notice the scan is stopped, you don't have any more frequency numbers running. The, the numbers are all stopped here on the system itself. You, uh, can then go back into the actual programs and you saw how it kind of took a second there to do that because it was actually loading that BFB program that I just saved and created to the database. So simply by searching BFB, now you can see right there that BFB Brad and the date program is the exact same program that I just ran for my biofeedback results. So again, with the TENS pads on, no differently, let's just assume we want to run a kill program off this. Um, so from home, um, because I am just going to do a shell program and I already have the contact pads on, um, and I'm going to do this as a killing CJW program. Again, as this is a shell, a shell program will not have your program specifically called out. So when I come over here, I'm going to tell it, I want to run the BFB results for the scan that I just conducted. And when you do that, it's going to pull up the notes, what you labeled this as, the time the program was created, and the visual confirmation that the software gives you that the BFB results have been pulled up is it shows you loaded programs, BFB results. You know, it's going to it shows you that this scan results are going to take 30 minutes to run. And from there, I'm just going to simply come back in. I would override generator, the same generator that I just ran the BFB scan on, because that is exactly where those TENS pads are connected. I would hit overwrite one. And then all of a sudden, boom it pulls up all those exact hits of what that BFB scan found. And then from there, I would simply hit start. And then it's gonna start running that program based off of a contact session of the pad still being attached to my body. And as you can tell, the total runtime would be for 30 minutes and then it would stop. And then again, no different. If I chose right now that I simply wanted to create a run or reverse lookup, um, I could adjust my tolerances for what I felt I was specifically wanting to run a tolerance lookup for, and then simply hit go from here. Now that the biofeedback options are pulled up and in the database for this generator right now, you can do whatever you'd like to do with it. So it's totally up to you. But most of the time people use biofeedback scans, you know, as, as, as targeting programs, you know, this is the frequencies that the scan found the biggest screamers in your body. Uh, and so it makes more sense to try to kill those pathogenically. But if you're running killing programs, obviously you want to make sure that you're hydrated, you're keeping up on your hydration levels. And uh, obviously 30 minute program is designed to just be short. So keep in mind, if you run that on loop for an hour or an hour and a half or however long that you're sitting there running that, you're breaking down more and more and more rate, uh, more rates in your body. And as that process happens, you know, you're releasing microtoxins and uh, stuff into your body. And it's not always going to feel that great. So you make sure that you're staying super hydrated. You know, Rife always believed that 
when that process of actually um, feeling like you were feeling crappy because whatever you were targeting was breaking down, he, he thought that that was proof that the frequencies were working, that they were actually targeting the, the things that you were wanting them to target, but your body's ability to, you know, push that the waste uh, result out to your exits fast enough. is just not there yet. And that's, again, that's primarily one of the main reasons why when you first get into doing, um, you know, scanning and biofeedbacks and stuff like that, that a lot of people do terrain protocols or do detoxing protocols first, because those healing modalities are designed to get those, those primary exits ready. When you start moving over to doing killing programs, like what you're doing with a biofeedback scan or something where you're targeting a pathogen specifically for a killing program. So that what we did right there is the actual full scan for how a contact scan can be run with a sample digitizer, excuse me, with a contact using a generator X. What we are going to do now, though, is we are going to actually switch over. Um, we'll take a look at the options for what you're doing when you're doing the sample digitizer scan. Uh, and while that process is happening, um, before we get into the actual scan itself, I'm actually going to hook up and run one of the scans right here on generator two. So, but first, the very first thing that you do is with the slides, um, I, I recommend that you um, always label your slides. Um, you can reuse these slides um, with regards to what type of DNA sample that you're putting on here. And the DNA samples, um, as you can kind of see from the, from the presentation, the DNA sample is up to you, whether you're using blood or you're using saliva or you're using urine. Urine won't technically have DNA in it, but it will have pathogenic threats. And you can run a BFB result program from that um, if you so choose to do so. But the samples on these slides that go technically on these E's here, as you see on the um, presentation, are specifically designed to be um, liquid. You know, So that's why if you're using saliva, you can simply use a swab from the inside of the mouth. Um, and then once these scan results are finished, then simply use either isopropylene alcohol. Um, uh, you know, said that you don't want to technically submerge these because they do have a um, circuitry inside of them, but you can wipe them down with um, alcohol and, and get them clean. And then as long as you're not using them on anybody else, they're just your, your pads, you can continue to reuse them over and over and over again. So um, again, my method for conducting this particular uh, test today or this biofeedback scan, if you will, uh, is going to be a blood draw. So I'm just going to take my blood sample here real quick and apply a baby drop of blood, just like you see here, baby drop of blood. And then once that process happens, simply take your little alcohol swab and clean up so that you don't leak or cause any problems. And once everything is cleaned up, then you'll take <clears throat> this E slide and you'll put this E slide directly on top of it. So you can see the, the DNA sample on it right there. And I'll close this up on it just like this. And you'll notice how when these are sandwiched correctly, these two plates and the holes line up with that little uh, gold plating at the bottom of it. So once you have that, and then you're simply gonna open the teeth on the sample digitizer and put that right back, right into those two teeth so that it makes contact and bites down. No different than exactly what you see uh, here. Um, however, you know, your sample is going to be between these slides. So that's ultimately what you just saw me do is put a blood sample onto that sample digitizer slide. Now, unlike in the previous scan where I was physically connected to the device while the scan was running, um, with this one, a sample digitizer scan, the beautiful thing about it is you do not physically have to sit down or be connected. Once the sample digitizer scan starts, you can simply walk away. Um, there, there is no physical connection. You know, it's using the scan results for this one based off of the, the blood sample that I applied to those two plates. So again, just like how we set up the contact scan the first time, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go in here and we're going to do a biofeedback scan. But this time, even though we're using the generator X, we're using the sample digitizer. So you're going to select sample digitizer. And when you do that, it's still going to ask you what type of scan. And again, this is a, one of the nicer features about the fact that since you're no longer connected to it, um, again, as I told you, when I run scans on that Friday night and, and go to run them into a Saturday morning, I tend to choose what you're seeing here as a fine resolution biofeedback scan. Now that fine resolution scan will take longer, but what do you care if you're not hooked up to it? So um, my 
I guess my what I'm going after that is, is that the results of kind of what you'll see are going to be a little bit better or more detailed when you allow it to kind of take the time to run a more thorough scan. Um, same thing with the reverse lookups for those options when you're seeing the, the sample digitizer scans come through. But in this instance, I'm simply going to be doing a, uh, a, regular, a regular general biofeedback scan. Um, again, use what the system tells you as the visual confirmations. You know that this program has been selected because where everything was empty before, you now see the notes populated. You now see the preset chain pulled up. You can see that what program you just selected is up and running. So now we're going to simply go and tell this that I have it, the override to generator two. And again, the visual confirmations that the system tells you is one, generator two is now set up for a biofeedback scan, a SD for a sample digitizer scan. Um, just like we did before, where we had the contact pads in place, you're now going to come down here for all of your operations for conducting that specific scan. Um, now, again, if I'm comparing apples to apples, I'm going to let my loop stay at two, and I'm also going to do angle and current because that's how I ran my original my original contact method. And from a two comparison of the two biofeedback scans, other than the way I saved them with you know one being a contact scan and one being a sample digitizer scan, you know the results of them are still going to be drastically different because one is a a scan based off of blood and the other one is a a scan based off of the, the frequencies that were specifically pinged through and what more rates were hit as that happened so again we're going to let this thing run and it's generating and loading the waveforms and again just like with the other process um, where you had some if you had something running in the in the background the system is automatically designed to pause whatever generators are hooked up so that it can specifically focus on this biofeedback scan and just like before, <clears throat> the system indicators, the, the generator that you selected for the biofeedback scan will, will turn purple. You'll see the scan results start taking off as the frequencies are counting up and your ch chain duration timer can start going up. So like I said, this is the process and we kind of will have this thing going in the background, but just like what you had for the contact method for the original scan, it is going to pop up with a, a scan results for those results that were what the you know pathogens were found from that blood drop that I applied between those two sample plates. So we're going to let that run and kind of like look at what the options are for here, how you actually physically apply those. We just physically saw that. So again, from the software perspective, you just watched me navigate through that, but this is going to give everybody the visual step-by-step -step for where did he go? What did he click on? So because we are doing a preset and this is going to be a biofeedback scan using a sample digitizer, your first step is going to do a biofeedback option. And again, even though you're conducting this on the generator X, the specific scan is being conducted by the sample digitizer. So you will select sample digitizer on the next slide. And again, from there, it will present the different options for the types of scans. As I had mentioned before, that hunt and kill protocol is seen right here. Um, there are several other options, again, for different things that uh, will, are only going to be available when you're using the sample digitizer and when you're using that on the generator of a Gen X. Um, you cannot use a sample digitizer on a XM generator. So specifically, when you're doing biofeedback scans, the XM generator has the pulse and only the pulse, whereas the generator X has quite a few different options, not just the contact method for doing their biofeedback scanning, but the sample digitizer. And then eventually uh, down the road, we'll talk about the scalar, you know, scalar capability of it doing a scalar digitizer um, biofeedback method as well. So like I said, there are basically different methods for how those biofeedback scans are done, depending upon what types of things you're targeting or trying to treat or go after with regards to what those feedback results are saying. But the sample digitizer scan, like I said, you're, for this part, you're simply going to select the general general scan itself. The SD callout in this naming structure will tell you that it's a sample digitizer scan. So the, the naming structure will tell you everything for what you're specifically doing. Now, just like I mentioned before, you'll go to control, you're going to hit overwrite, and you're going to hit the generator that's running your biofeedback scan for the sample digitizer. Um, now in this instance, for the display that I had on the screen, you'll notice that the, the other generator turned yellow. 
It's because that's what I was indicating before. If you have other generators that are up and running, let's say they're running remotes or um, even still running the TENS contact session that you had from the, the contact, the BFD scan, um, those remote generators will pause um, simply because right now the software is exclusively focused on the results of that biofeedback scan and monitoring those results and creating my specific results. Once the scan completes, those programs will pick back up, no problem. But during the biofeedback scan, all other generators are going to be paused that are in this particular database. And you'll see that with the yellow pause here. Again, your you know, visual indication of the, of the BFD scan being selected will be that it turns purple. Um, and again, once you select your options down here and hit scan, you'll have that visual like what you're seeing over on my screen with the actual scan being conducted that looks just like this, where you'll see as this ping sweep is running through those two plates and, 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 and finding hits, these are the different frequencies and the ranges as it's actually happening in real time. So just like what you saw from the other slide over there, like I said, as this thing kind of runs in the background, that's the beautiful thing about not having to be connected to it. So, um, you can allow a biofeedback scan to, to happen without physically having to sit there and wait. And in comparison to working backwards, even from a contact scan of six minutes or even further backwards with an XM scan that takes 45 minutes to an hour, that's a pretty drastic improvement to be able to run something um, that can normally be finished uh, within just a couple minutes and you don't even physically have to be connected to it anymore. So, um, People um, normally have asked the question with regards to whether or not you can use fingernails um, on the sample digitizer. So real quick before and while this scan is completing on the background, um, the answer to that is that the not really. Um, I know that sounds confusing, but you want a liquid sample um, on between those two sample plates. That's why it's more effective when you're using saliva or blood or um, even urine. Whereas you could take the fingernail and grind that down into dust, but um, like I said, the, the results of that aren't going to be as effective in my opinion. And again, just from my personal use of doing biofeedback scans as the ease and effectiveness of simply, I mean, I, I took a, a blood sample here in front of everybody and no problem. It was just one second and the biofeedback scan was up and running. So I didn't have to grind anything down. I didn't have to cut a fingernail. I didn't have to do anything else. I could have, if, again, if I simply wanted to take a saliva out, out of my mouth, I could have done that as well. But um, it's, I'm a diabetic. I have been my whole life. So taking, you know, finger pricks is no big deal for me. Um, one little baby drop of blood and it can go and do all the work for me without me physically having to be connected to the software. That's pretty remarkable stuff. So as this um, scan is getting ready to wrap up here, like I said, no different than how if you're doing the pulse and the XM scan or you're doing the regular contact method scan, um, the results are going to pop up and have you save them. So no different than how you save the other ones. And the key with regards to being the, the naming structure for who's doing the scan and uh, the date specifically that the scan was run. In addition to that, with these results, um, I tend, just like you kind of saw how I marked the last one with a C for contact, um, it helps me be able to, to see that call out as, like I said, as you start getting into more and more and more scans down the road, um, it's gonna be difficult to keep track of which scan was which, you know, even with the date, Sometimes are you doing different types of scans, whether you're using contact pads or you're using um, sample digitizers, it helps just to have a file structure where you can look and see, oh, SD, that one was a sample digitizer scan or C, that was a contact scan, the date and who it was for. So again, that's just personally how I run my BFBs and um, the effectiveness of keeping organized documentation for, you know, if you're going into it and you want to actually take advantage of how these scan results are running and where to find them, and you got to be able to put a file format name that you remember and that you can find them down the road because I've walked through the process of being able to go in and identify in the programs where they save. Um, very, very simple, very easy to do, but it's all up to you with regards to what information that you put in that, that file format for how you go in and find that. But you can definitely be found in the programs after those scans complete. And, uh, and that for the most part, is you know, the process for how you're going to be conducting the different biofeedback scans. Now, I was not able to uh, demonstrate live with regards to how to do the XM and the pulse scan, um, simply because as I mentioned before, 
Um, I couldn't be, you know, physically be able to sit up and talk to you guys and walk you through the process of what one of those scans look like um, while physically being connected to that. Um, that device will require you to lay down um, and it does take a full hour. So even in the whole time that we've been talking since this presentation has started, we would just now be getting to a point where the first scan would be finishing up. So you can tell night and day difference uh, just between the two generators of, of what you get speed wise when you're doing a biofeedback scan with a Gen X versus an XM. Both are capable of doing the exact same similar types of scan, but what you get feature and functionality wise um, when you're paying for the generator X is improved speed or faster time with regards to fast results. Um, no longer having to lie down, that is a huge benefactor. Um, also, Again, most people don't like having to remove outside uh, RF interference sources like a TV or a cell phone. Um, it's, it's, it can be rough enough to, <laughs> to lay down on your back and have to wonder how long a scan result is taking. Um, but when you take out the ability to play any games on your phone or do anything um, or watch any television or anything like that, it can be quite a lot longer than you actually expected it to be. So um, in comparison to running a six-minute scan that you're seeing on these um, generator X. And like I said, even right now, we're sitting at roughly nine minutes. Um, most of the time, even with the two loops on this, my sample digitizer scans on average finish around 11 or 12 minutes. So the contact scan that we ran, that took 12 minutes. So we'll see kind of how this one goes, but no different than um, the last results. Uh, what I'm going to do is simply change the file format for how I saved this. Um, I'm going to still use my name and I'm going to still use the date, but um, instead of a C for contact, I'm simply going to label this as a SD or sample digitizer scan. Um, and then that way, depending upon the different protocols that you're using in the, in the database, <clears throat> there are certain, um, for example, um, cancer protocols that you're using different types of scans where you're using a cancer scan and you're using a biofeedback scan. Um, and those multiple different types of scans can be very difficult to navigate through when you have the entire database full up of scans every two or three days um, as you're tracking. And so correctly labeling and make sure that you get the right naming structure is really important because like I said, it may not seem like such a big deal when you first get started because it's your first BFB scan or you're, you know, you're just getting into it. But I promise you when you get down the road and you've got 20 or 30 of these things, you'll be like, I wish I would have labeled these better. And you can still always go in and edit those. I'm not really sure that a whole lot of people know that, but when the software actually finishes running the scan, you can actually go into the uh, the, the biofeedback database and edit like your file name or structures or change part of the um, anything that you want to by simply going up into the database here and selecting the options. Um, but we're gonna let the biofeedback scan complete for the sample digitizer. And at least that way during this presentation, you've been able to physically see the process of running both scans. Um, how those scans are actually physically conducted. Um, we've actually finished doing the contact scan already and you notice that the, the pads have been reapplied back to the, to the contact pads. So um, for 12 minute scan, not very, very, very long. And we were already able to save that BFB scan. So as soon as the scan results finish here for the sample digitizer, then we're gonna save those scan results and then go back into the database and show you exactly like we did with the first contact session, how to find those. And again, you know, like I said, if you have a Gen X, the ability to run like the hunt and kill protocol is really what makes this thing so phenomenal is because it really takes the work out of having to go in and rewrite programming or telling it what to do. You simply tell it when you run and find a biofeedback hit, run that to the, the generator next to it as a kill program. And, uh, and like I said, that handoff back and forth between the two will continue until you don't have any more pathogenic threats or you stop the program yourself. So like I said, uh, for me personally, I do that on a weekly basis. Um, I do that Friday night. And by the time I wake up Saturday morning, um, I have pretty much run a kill program for all of my my pathogenic threats from a, from a sample digitizer scan. Again, um, it's quite different when you're running, you know, hunt and kill protocols because you're targeting and killing protocols. So in your body, make sure that when you're running or targeting kill, you know, kill programs like that, that you are staying hydrated. So 
just like you see here, um, no different than how those first results popped up. Um, total scan time on that one was right at 12 minutes and 51 seconds. So again, whether you're connected, not connected, even combined 24 minutes, if you're doing both types of scans in comparison to a one hour um, pulse XM scan is drastically much, much, much faster. So in this instance, when I go to save this, um, again, I'm still gonna use BFB as the file format. I am still gonna use my name and I am still going to use the date structure for today. Um, however, I am going to go in and say that if this is going to be a SD for sample digitizer scan. So when I then save this, and it loads that then back into the database. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned before, if for some reason you ever wanted to go in and edit your actual biofeedback results or the naming structures of them, or let's say you no longer wanna have a biofeedback system uh, scan in your, in your actual database, you can come in here to edit, bi bi edit biofeedback databases, and it will actually pop up with a, a whole nother entry for going in and being able to modify those, those files. And then once you modify the names and or edit or delete the, the BFP scans that you no longer want, then you simply save and that will re-update here in the database. So just like what we did before, um, where we were running, uh, looking for the BFP programs, simply by clicking on programs, you notice right away, it brought my second sample digitizer scan. You know, I saved it as an SD scan, so it's right here. Um, no different than how I created a, a healing or a killing program for the contact session earlier. Um, uh, again, with the sample digitizer, now that the program is in the database, what you do with the BFB results are entirely up to you. Um, like I said, you can create your own kill programs. You can run the sample digitizer and a, a remote for the hunt and kill. Um, it's, it's really a, your, your preference. Um, like I said, that's really just my once a week go-to um, simply because it's easy, it's convenient, and it allows me to constantly just check on the potential you know, pathogenic threats from a, a simple drop of blood. I'll let that thing really do all the work behind the scenes um, as you know, I don't even have to be connected. I can go off. I can uh, be in the next room. I can be asleep. And by the time I wake up the next morning, it will tell me um, what, what the, you know, what it found for me. So very, 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 very beneficial. So let's go back here real quick and take a look that after you get the save results, like you just saw, um, and you save them and then go in, you can relabel them for whether you're doing a sample digitizer scan or whether you're doing a contact scan or whether you're doing a pulse scan, you know, save that. You can find that in the database. But once you save those results, go to the programs tab. The programs tab will have all of your BFB results for you to then run. When I look at the overall comparison of the two generators, um, what is the go-to? You know, in my opinion, it really breaks down to each individual person. Um, the whole point of what you get from both of these generators is the availability to customize to your you know needs. You know, let's assume you know you're focused on a, a very tight budget and you just want to get going. The XM is beautiful. You know, it's a hundred dollars. It's a very, very well put together device, but it has all the functionalities once you combo that with the software of doing almost identically of what this thing does. Now, again, you will have some standout features. You know, this is the you know, the industry go-to with regards to Spooky 2. This is their go-to guy for right now. Um, the Generator X, for the most part, drastic difference in your biofeedback scans. You're talking six minutes in comparison to an hour, two generators versus one. The ability to write programs onto this guy, um, 30 programs, 200 frequencies each, up to you know, 30 different programs that you then can physically disconnect from the software and take that with you. Um, run the programs completely without the software. That's pretty interesting and pretty remarkable. Cause like I said, you then less hardware is always a, a better factor for, for me and my understanding of, you know, wherever I'm on the road or anything like that. This is a very easy option for me to be able to save five or you know, five or six programs of my most frequently run programs, take this guy with me. And then I have everything that I need right there with me. I don't even need technically my laptop because I can run the programs without it. So um, but honestly, what it breaks down to is, is what's going to you know, meet your needs. I think that's the whole angle and point of, of both of these products is, is yes, the XM generator um, you know, at being $100 is a great dive in point, but features and functionality wise, you truly get more you know, when you're buying the, the generator X simply because you're get, 
double with regards to the, the number of function generators. You get a higher frequency range, again, zero to 25 megahertz with the software versus zero to 40 megahertz, even without the software. So right out of the gate, it, you're talking uh, the ability to hit much higher frequency ranges with the generator X versus generator XM. Um, but again, honestly, what I believe is that this breaks down to personal need. Um, you know, I have both. I, I have um, several of both. But as um, my needs for different generators pop up, then I simply find which, you know, which is going to be the most convenient for me to add on. You know, if I have, for example, if I have multiple different applications that I want to add on, it may be more beneficial for me to buy one or two Gen Xs and then one XM versus five XMs. Um, you know, it's all, it all really comes down to what you're, you know, looking to accomplish with, with the two generators. They both have their own feature set. They both have their own functionalities, but you will get what you pay for. Um, and the generator X is the um, kind of go-to product right now with regards to the two, the, just these two in comparison. Um, higher frequency range, two for one in generators, and a drastic difference in the biofeedback scan, six minutes versus an hour. Um, but don't be discouraged by that. That, that. that isn't to say that if you know, you're know you just getting in or you're just starting that the XM generator isn't going to be able to perform at the rate that you want it to because it can. It can run parallel once you're using it with the software. That's the beautiful thing about it. So that's the beautiful thing about both of these soft or both of these generators is, is you can customize them to your specific needs. Um, whether you start with a generator X and then down the road realize that you'd like to add on extra generators, no problem. That's the beautiful thing of where an extra hundred dollar generator comes in because you can take your existing setup that you already have successfully up and running and just add on generator here, add on a generator there, whatever is suitable for you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming out and being a part of this presentation. Thank you guys, everybody. And I hope that you guys have a great night.